study I chose was the epidemiology of PIF and knee pain and its impact on overall health status in older adults. As many of y'all who know me know, I do have hip pain already, so I found this article very interesting just to know like the prevalence rate of hip pain as I get older and you know who may be joining me in that population. Um, so the intro. So this study is relevant because systematic hips and knee cause considerable disability and social isolation in the elderly. This can be a problem because once individuals are isolated, then they can often become cognitively unaware of their surroundings and um, just lead to more complications. Persistent hip and knee pain is generally due to osteoarthritis in the elderly people. So past research. Several studies do exist that look at the prevalence of pain in the hip and knee. But these studies vary in age profile. Sometimes they have lower or upper age limits, and rarely do they ever look at hip and knee pain together. This, the research that does exist does agree that the prevalence rate of hip and knee disease is highest among those who are 65 years and older. So the purpose of the current study was to ascertain the prevalence of hip and or knee pain in older people, to investigate the patterns of hip and knee symptomology, and to investigate whether different combinations of symptomatic hips and knees are associated with different levels of overall health status. The participants in the study. So 5,500 Oxfordshire residents were originally selected for this. Of that 5,500 people, 119 were found to be deceased and 342 no longer lived at the residence. So that left 5,039, and of those, 3,341 completed and returned the questionnaires. The people that did return the questionnaires complete were split up into age groups of 65 to 74, 75 to 84, and 85 and above. Materials. The questionnaire was sent to 5,500 residents of 65 years or older who were 65 years old. It was divided into three sections, a general section that just asked about general health, a hip section, and a knee section. Both the hip and knee section contained items about current symptoms and previous joint replacement. The screening question for both of these sections was, during the last 12 months, have you had pain in or around either of your hips or knees on most days for one month or longer? If they answered yes to this question, then they proceeded to answer more questions about their pain, and if no, they went on to the next section. Procedures. A cross-sectional survey approach was used. Addresses were collected from the Oxfordshire, Oxfordshire Health Authority Register of January 2002. A postal questionnaire and cover letter was sent out to everyone within a two-week period. The cover letter encouraged respondents to use you know, someone to aid them in answering the questionnaire if they found that helpful. Non-respondents were sent two reminders and a photocopy of the questionnaire. Statistical analysis. A Pearson's chi-square test was run to examine if the positioning of the hip and knee sections within the questionnaire had an effect on the completion of screening questions, so did it matter if the knee section came first or the hip section, to examine the age and sex-specific rates of, pre of previous joint replacement, and to examine the age and sex-specific rates of relationship to self-reported hip and knee pain. The results. The overall prevalence rate for people affected by hip pain was 19.2%. People affected by knee pain was 32.6%. Percentage of people who reported a previous hip or knee replacement was 75% for hip replacement. 7.5% for hip replacement, and 3.9% for knee replacement. A higher rate was seen in hip replacements in elderly women. And to talk about that um, difference in the elderly women versus elderly men, it could have been that, number one, there are um, more respondents of elderly women 
than elderly men for this survey, and also that um, social reasons, or, or elderly women may be more likely to say that they have um, hip pain than elderly men. You know, maybe they think it's, you know, they're too macho for that or something. <laughs> Discussion. The majority, almost 60%, had no persistent hip or knee pain. So that's great for those who don't already have hip pain. Me? Eh, not so good. <laughs> Um, the people reporting hip and knee pain did not substantially increase with age. So once they had it at 65, then you know that didn't really increase. They didn't see that. There were differences between male and female rates of reporting hip and knee pain in the 65 to 74 age group. Higher rates for women in the 85 and over age group. So this difference could be, number one, because more women did re did reply to this, and number two, you know, it's more likely that women seek help and say that they are in pain than men usually. People um, who had undergone past joint replacement were almost twice as likely to report, report current joint pain as well, which is discouraging for those who do seek that help. Bilateral knee symptoms were found to be more common than bilateral hip symptoms. And overall, and over half of the individuals with hip pain reported knee pain. Pain in both places probably didn't start at the same time, so this is something that future research could look at. Um, you know, does the time in which there's intervention or you know, treatment done, does it decrease the amount of pain in those other areas? The limitations of this study. Although the study concentrated on elderly people, the respondents were of that lower age group, so like 65 to 74. A lot of them fell in that age group. The sample seemed somewhat healthier and wealthier than the general public, and it was self-reported pain. So as we know, um, it's not always reliable. The future studies should, number one, have a larger sample size. It's always something we should strive for. And um, different measures could be used. So they could look at general health versus specific functioning of the affected areas. So how does, you know, not being able to mobilize, how does that affect your general health and how does that just affect things like with your knee pain or hip pain? Thank you for your time. <laughs>